Hello everyone. How are you today? I trust you all well. Welcome to my channel on Inner Transformation Poetry and Fabric Art. I'm Kairu and I'm a Reiki and Seiki Master. And I do Akashic readings for those of you that want to access your Akashic record. And I'm also able to connect you, connect you to your galactic family for those of you that have progressed uh, to that level. If you want to connect uh, with your galactic family, I'm able to do that. My links are below, so uh, please connect if you if you resonate uh, with me or what or what I'm I'm presenting. I'd be more than willing to to guide your progress, your inner transformation progress. Today, I want to speak about a few minutes about soul contract. Because when you're on a path of inner transformation, it's very important to understand what a soul contract is and what contracts you are involved in and how you need to change this or end it when it, when it becomes necessary. So before we look at a soul contract, let's look at... Um, to make it a bit easier, let's look at the characteristics of a contract in 3D, in the third dimension. So when we, um, when we have a contract in, uh, in 3D, um, which, which most humans are involved in all the time, we, we have we have all kinds of contracts with all kinds of people all the time in the third dimension and these contracts are mostly about the exchange of third dimensional commodities for um, for finance for money so, for example, um, when you're buying a property, or when you're buying a vehicle, uh, or when you're buying information, you need to enter into a contract with the bank or with whoever you're purchasing uh, the goods from. Uh, you enter into a legal contract with them. And uh, that contract... Uh, is in force until such time that the agreed energy, energy exchange is complete. So when you, um, when you, for example, buying a property, and you, <coughs> sorry, I'm recovering from a cold. When you um, buying a property and the mortgage payments is complete, the contract ends. There's no, there's no more obligation between you and the financial house or the bank or whoever you've bought or whoever you mortgaged um, the, pro the property from. The same uh, would apply for example when you um, wanting to learn something you go to university or you contract someone to teach you a particular skill when that contract is complete it ends there's no there's no emotional attachment there's no further legal obligations um, it's it's easy to end the contract it finishes so it's quite straightforward there's there's no emotional attachment involved however when you have a soul contract with someone, the contract happens not in 3D, not in the material dense reality. Uh, it happens at the level of soul. 
You contract with a particular, with another soul, at the level of soul, before you embody into the third dimensional reality. So the inner energy exchange doesn't normally involve finance, money. It's an exchange of a high frequency energy between two or more souls that have a common purpose during the uh, sojourn on planet Earth or during their stay in the third dimension. And that soul contract normally involves something that the souls have in common or a common lesson that they need to learn. Those lessons revolve around soul issues. So it, it, it revolves around the evolution of your soul. It, involves, it revolves around soul freedom, soul detachment, soul obligations, um, protection of the soul. So it's a much deeper contract and it's not between uh, uh, humans at the mental at the mental level it's between humans at the level beyond the mental so so it involves your higher mind your emotional body uh, any karma that exists between you and another soul uh, in the astral realm and um, if you have a very uh, a deep soul connection with someone, for example, you in a twin, a twin soul relationship, uh, the connection is really deep and long, lasts long, um, longer lasting. So it's it goes right up to the level, to the causal level, when your when a, a source has created you. So does that make sense? Let me just see if uh, if I'm if I mentioned everything I wanted to mention. So um, the so the soul lessons. Just to recap, the soul lessons involve self love, soul freedom, detachment, uh, artistic expression and creation, soul evolution, um, eradication of karma protection of divine energy and the evolution of the planet so those are the those are the main um, the main issues the main lessons that soul contracts uh, revolve around um, the other th diff the, 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 the other difference between a normal 3d contract and a soul contract is that a 3D contact, as I just mentioned, is very easy to end and, and, and complete with. A soul contract is not so easy to end. Although what I want to emphasize here in this little video is that soul contracts need not be permanent. In other words, when there is a contract between two souls to finish a karmic um, obligation, when the karmic obligation ends, the soul contract will end. And normally your spirit guides will, will nudge you to end a soul contract if a karmic obligation is complete. So say for example you've entered into a marital relationship with someone that you've had karma with from a past lifetime. And um, you've paid your karma and the person has paid their karma and the relationship no longer serves any purpose. Then your spirit guides or source itself will end that contract. You cannot continue, for example, a marital contract, which really is a 3D contract. 
when the cell application is is complete it has to end in order for your cell to evolve and move on to a higher level or into a new octave or to learn new lessons so even though uh, it is extremely painful to end cell contracts remember that cell contracts are not permanent even contracts between um, parent and offspring even though soul contracts need to end in order for your soul to move on to the primary reason for our embodiment on planet earth which is soul freedom soul individuation and finally soul freedom and dissolution into source so some people think that soul contracts um, soul contracts are forever and uh, it ends when you die no soul contracts can end at any time in the same way that the 3d contract can end when the obligations are finished complete it's just that a soul contract involves um, more entanglement at realms beyond the third dimension which means in order for disentanglement to happen and the contract to end it is painful however what we need to remember is that that pain that we have to endure emotionally and at the level of the heart and in all, in all our different uh, energy centers, that pain is part of the process of soul evolution. We have to go through it in order to move on. Does that make sense? Um, what else did I want to say oh normally when you enter into a soul contract with someone um, you will recognize the soul immediately in other words your core soul frequency is um, is very similar or uh, in some cases like for example in in twin twin soul uh, in the twin soul phenomena the soul uh, frequency is identical but you will recognize the frequency of your soul group or your soul tribe almost instantly it's instant recognition because you travel with those uh, with those souls through many lifetimes are uh, and in some and you embody in similar contexts so for example um uh, um i'm in south africa and uh, we we went through as as some of you know we went through a terrible period of um uh, repression and the souls that have fought against the the repression repressive government they recognized one another immediately they recognized immediately that they had the same mission to overthrow an oppressive government so the frequency was the same at that time that doesn't mean that the frequency, the frequency of, for example, comrades will always be the same. Some of them will tend to remain in the same frequency. Others will take on uh, different cell paths and the frequencies and vibration will change according to, according to what their soul has uh, undertaken to learn. But the, the recogni soul recognition is an immediate recognition. Does that make sense? Let's see what other. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, often 
in sole contracts, when there are when there's a sole contract between two or more souls, the ability to speak beyond human language is very high. So telepathy is high. Your understanding of energy movement is the same. So you're able to understand uh, the other soul immediately without human words. And human words can sometimes um, be a bit, become cumbersome between souls that understand one another well. Uh, and uh, um, for those of you that are parents um, and you have contracts with your if offspring, you will you know, for example, that you know immediately when your offspring is sending you a message, uh, or they will receive a message from you. Uh, for example, when you when you're late at picking them up or something like that, um, they will sense it immediately. Okay, does that, um, does that make things a bit clearer about what a soul contract is? Okay. Um, So if you have any more questions around soul contracts or specific contracts, um, my, my details are in the description below. Feel free to connect with me and I'm sending you lots of love and high frequency energy and um, go well, have a good day, goodbye.